Hi guys, I'm Rio Ferdinand. This is Locker Room. Next up, we've got Wilfred Zaha. Born and raised in Ivory Coast, moved to the UK at four years old, made his debut for Crystal Palace in 2010, aged just 17 years old. At 19 years old, he signed for Manchester United for £10 million. He's back at Crystal Palace now, making waves. Ivory Coast, fully fledged international. Wilfred, welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Rio, man. No, cool, man. Good to, good to have you, man. I've been wanting to talk to you for a long time. Obviously, I played with you when you come to, to Man United. Let's take it back to when you was growing up. You were born, like I said before, in the Ivory Coast. Your family moved to the UK. What was that like? There was quite a few of us. There were about nine of us in a three-bedroom house. So mm. it sounds quite daunting and tough, but I, I kind of enjoyed it, to be honest, because there was just so many of us and it was just fun. It was just fun at the time me really so I kind of love my childhood. Where, where did, where did you uh, move to when you came here? Um, Fort and Heath. Okay. Like, literally by the stadium, a road called Rossi Road. So you was playing football from an early age? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I love football from early and obviously I, like when we used to go park and stuff with my brothers and stuff, we wouldn't even have to wait to make teams of other people. There was enough of us to play. <laughs> so yeah, we're playing from early, man. So who, who were your idols growing up? You grew up next to the stadium, Crystal Palace. Were there any yeah. Crystal Palace players who were your idols or was it further afield you looked? Um, for, like, I supported um, Arsenal, so Thierry Henry was definitely someone I thought was unbelievable, man. Like, I used to, I used to watch him constantly. So what about, his, did, you, did you take any of his, of his game into your own game at all or is it just like... I just liked his movement, like the way he finessed the ball, his speed. But I'm more of a dribbler, I'm more of an entertainer, okay. do you know what I mean? So... As I grew up, obviously, I, I loved Arsenal, so Henri was a, was a guy that I idolised. But Ronaldinho, as I got older, Ronaldinho mm. was my main man. We're, we're fast forwarding there, yeah, because I'm going to go through the levels where you've grown up, yeah. But you talked about being an entertainer there, yeah. Is that what you see yourself as, and is that what you pride yourself on? Going into a game, I want to entertain these people that pay to watch me play. I want to get an assist, I want to score goals. But at the same time, you want to enjoy what you're doing and you want everyone they're watching to enjoy it as well. So, obviously, when I go on the pitch, it's definitely I'm there to entertain. When you receive the ball, yeah, and you face the fullback, right? Say you're in the final third. What's the first thought in Wilfred Zaha's head then? What movement I can make first to make them go through it so I can... It'll, that movement that I do will give me that split second to think, of what, think about what I can do next. Hmm. Basically. So, it'll be like, I'll do a step over or a feint and then that gives me that slight second to look up and see if I've got to cross it in or a through ball to someone. Yeah. You know mm, mm. yeah. Get the defender on the back foot type thing. Yeah. Mm. As as he does that. It's just like, okay, now what do I do quickly then? Yeah. So this roll on 19 years old, you're smashing it at, um, at Palace. Lots of interest. You obviously end up getting signed. Fergie's, sorry, it's Ferguson's last signing as a manager. Um, What's that like for you as a young player from South London coming to Manchester United, signed by the great Sir Alex Ferguson? And how did the move come about? When I heard all that talk here, I didn't even believe it at first. <laughs> the same was mad. me. And it was mad, bro. Like, I didn't believe it at all. Like, Manchester United, like, Sir Alex Ferguson wants me. And I was just thinking, no, nah, this can't be true. Like, I just started hearing rumours and it's like... It's never, I've never heard anything like it. I've never been in that environment before. So I was just like, you know what, let me just carry on doing what I'm doing. And it'll, it'll play out the way it's supposed to play out. So hmm. um, I just carried on. And then the time when I heard it was proper serious was when we played against Peterborough away. And I think, I forgot his, um, Alex Ferguson's son's name. He, he was the manager. Yeah, yeah, Darren Ferguson. Yeah. They told me that he had a word with Silas Ferguson that, yeah, he's, he's the real deal and you should sign him and stuff. That's when it started. It started feeling real like, wow, like I might actually go. There was loads of talks over time and then he, Silas Ferguson actually asked to meet me in London. And then, yeah, like I... I, I Did your legs go? Oh, it was mad, man. <laughs> I literally went to a hotel, yeah, in, in London, yeah. And what's it called? Like, I was walking up to this massive door and I was thinking, oh my days, like, I'm actually going to meet. So I didn't even know what to say. My head was going crazy, man. But I've knocked on the door now. He's opened the door and it's like, it's Sir Alex Ferguson and Sir Bobby Charlton. It's just both Whoa. there. I'm thinking, I've watched you on TV for years. Like, this is mad. 
you know what I mean? To know that he wants me, like for me coming from nowhere, do you know what I mean? And it's like working so hard. So you signed for Man United, then all of a sudden, Sonic Sturgis is not going to be there when you eventually arrive at Manchester United. What does that do for you? Um, it crushed me a little bit because it's like, it went, after speaking to him, it was a no-brainer that I wanted to go there. Do you know mm. what I mean? I had no idea he was leaving. Hmm. You well, know, when you spoke to him, what, did, he, did, he, did he talk to you about how he wants you to play and you'd fit into Man United, etc.? What did he talk about in, in that meeting with you? Um, he didn't tell me exactly how he wanted me to play, but he just told me that... He just told me straightforward stuff. Obviously, you know, like, obviously, you're going to have to earn your position. You're not going to play all the time. Um, you're, there's a lot of youngsters in the team, so you'll be able to go in with the likes of Welbeck and Cleverly. And, and I was like, that is more than fine, like, all I want is my opportunity, mm. like, just to just to show what I can do. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, it was a, it was a straightforward conversation. Mm. You know what? It's mad because like people ask me about that. Like, Wilfred being a South London boy, I'm from South London. Like, what happened with Wilfred at Man United? And I'm like, well, you know what? When I look back, I don't think he was handled properly when he was there. Uh, would you make that the right kind of a, a assumption? Think about it, Rio. I've gone there when I'm like 19. Um, I'm trying, like, I feel like I tried my best because I played with you. Remember when we went on, mm. we went on tour and I felt On like tour, I was, you was the best player. You were the, like, you, you the best player on tour with Jesse Lingard. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So I was, I was feeling like, um, like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I feel like it's working out. Like, obviously, mm. over time, I learned, uh, I was making mistakes here and there. Like, I remember I, I came and I forgot my suit and stuff. I was thinking, <laughs> okay. Like I need to, I need to fix up these little things because here is the real deal. Do you know what I mean? But mm. I feel like on the field, I was making sure that I was doing what what I needed to do. And then you come back, and there's headlines in the papers for all the wrong reasons. Talk me through that period of your life, man. Um, it was stressful, man, because it's like obviously I'm 19, um, I'm living in Manchester, and all of a sudden we come back from the tour, and I'm. I'm not playing for no reason. And obviously, people are going to make up stuff. And there was rumours that I slept with David Moyes' daughter. And it was just like, what is this nonsense, man? Like, I'm not playing, which is hard enough. Because I'm, I'm in Manchester, where mm. I'm by myself, and I'm not playing on top of it. So it's stressful enough to have a rumour. Because people came out of it. I see it trending on Twitter. People came out, yeah. How can you play so well on tour? and be, just be dashed out like that with nothing. No one telling us anything. He must have slept with a, with a manager's door. And that just started going. And think about it, I'm, I'm 19, and my Twitter is blowing up. Like, I've never had it before. Like, my Twitter is blowing up. And uh, there's no one for me to speak to. No one, like, at the, the club at all told me anything. Like, I didn't know what to do whatsoever. And I think we, I spoke to you around the time and I think, that, I think that's where I think the club let you down. I think you should have been spoken to by the management, uh, the powers that be at the club to really kind of put your mind at ease that we're not blaming you. And that didn't allow for you to sit there and not think that actually this is being held against me. And that's what it must have felt for you at that point. This situation is being held against me when I've not even done anything wrong. Because I remember tweeting something about it saying silly rumours. Mm. And then because it was getting too much. So I had to say something myself. And then I remember the, the club media messaging me, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have done this. And I'm thinking, but you don't have an LB. I'm, I'm mm. here by myself, struggling mm. with this because people are telling me I've slept with someone, the manager's daughter, that's why you're not playing. And the mm. funny thing is, it's carried on for so long. I felt like, is the manager not going to come and have a word with me over this? Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it didn't. And I felt like, is this actually being used against me? Like, mm. basically, this rumor's going about and it's, and it's working for, for, for me not having to use him. Do you know mm. what I mean? That's how I felt. And I was thinking, this, this is ridiculous, man. But up to this day, I still, I still get people that think. I still get people that think that's true. And I've mm. never even met his daughter. So imagine Crazy, that. Man. The it's power of social media, man. That's what people have to understand. The power of social media, putting stupidness on there can really affect people, man, in the long run. Yeah, 100%. 100%, man. Talking about the whole mental health thing, people, on, people don't realise 
You're, mm. you going on the internet and saying these things that will have a crazy effect on someone else's life. Mm. So Alex Ferguson, in situations like you're talking about, he would have come to you and he would have spoke to you and he put his arm around you. And I just feel that because the job was so different for, us, for David Moyes from coming from Everton to Man United, there was so much going on that these little details, I think, that he kind of maybe just overlooked. And I think looking back, I think David Moyes would look and say, that's an area that I probably could have done better. People were kind of putting out into the media that you're sulky, you've got a bad attitude, etc. How have you dealt with that? What did that do to you in terms of your mental health? I don't understand it because this whole thing um, of me having a bad attitude started from when I wasn't playing at Manchester United. And I feel mm. like it just carried on. But the thing is, the, the question I would ask is, if I had such a bad attitude, why would Palace welcome me straight back? You mm. know what I mean? Because mm. everyone that knows me at Palace know what I'm like. They've had, I've been at Palace since the age of eight. Mm. They know me yeah. inside out. So if I was such a bad egg and I had a bad attitude, they would have been, when they sold me, they would have been like good riddance to that player. Like, we don't, yeah. we just had back. I think it's strange, isn't it? It's strange how, like, social media or different parts of the media can actually paint a picture of a, of a certain person that they've never met, they don't know, that can then follow them around their career and tarnish their career. And if you're not strong enough mentally, like you've been and that you've yeah. showed, people can fall under, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you've played with me, Rio. I wasn't, I wasn't the type, even when I went there from 19, I wasn't mm. the type to lash out at anyone or whatever. I feel like I got on with everyone at, at mm. United. Again, I'll repeat myself again. It's testament to you and your mental strength, the way you come back and handled yourself, the way you conducted yourself. You're now international. Your player is being courted for, for 50, 60, 70 million pounds. And that's because of you, man. That's because of your attitude. So, well, uh, listen, I, I hats off to you all the time. Thank you very much, Rio, man. Obviously, it, this is a weight off my shoulders, actually being able to speak to someone that, like someone that was at Man United and obviously you being a legend at United. So people will understand because it's like, I can speak about this all day long, but mm. if someone that was there can actually, we can actually speak about a conversation and you can actually say for yourself, it makes such a difference because I can sit with someone and just tell them this, this and that, and they won't believe me. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, being able to speak about those points has made a massive difference for me, man. Good, man. You wasn't given a fair crack of the whip at Man United, and I think that you could have been a great asset in that sense. Do you have any regrets about, about going there? Is there? Did you learn anything off anybody or being there at that time? There's never regrets for you, man. Like, hmm. I've met, I met so much amazing players that I've watched from young. You was there, Giggsy was there. Rooney was there, Van Persie was there. So much players that I've managed to learn from, so it's never regrets. So going into a change room like that, like you mentioned, the players there, what was that like for a young 19-year-old? And did you, did you um, take anything out of that? I'm sitting in the same change room as the people I've worked to win titles after titles after titles. Mm. You know? And that's what I want in my career. And it's like I'm finally here with these lot. Like being able to watch people... It's different when you watch them firsthand. Do you know what I mean? How good the gear is... How, how Van Persie, you wouldn't even know this unless you see it for yourself, like his chest is curved in in a way where, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, it's curved in in a way where it allows him to, if he wanted to carry a ball on his chest, he could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See when he gets that ball and he chests it and volleys it or whatever, like when you see his frame, it makes sense, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. How good he is technically. Do you know what I mean? He was mad technically, and he was a bad player. Yeah, I didn't realise he was that good till I see him live every exactly. day. Exactly. It's the same thing, man. Like we played a two V twos where I think it was me, me and Nanny against him and Fellaini. And obviously that's when that's when I saw raw. Oh, he's actually got mad feet. Do you know what mad I mean? So, yeah, man. I appreciate I appreciate every moment there. Obviously, things didn't go to plan the way I wanted to, mm. like, the way I wanted it to, but uh, never a regret, man. So you're back at Palace now, and you're doing well. You, as, as I said, all these teams are bidding money for you, etc. Are you are you somebody that thinks about trophies when you finish your career? Is that you what you want to look at, or uh, is that something that's not really on your your, your mind right now? What I'm trying, I'm uh, real. I'm 27. Like trophies is what it's all about. Like if yeah. if there's opportunity for me to win trophies and stuff, then 100 percent, man. That's a hundred percent what I want in my career. Do you know what I mean? So mm. somehow, obviously, every day I'm working towards that, man. 
You said you're an Arsenal fan. Were Arsenal one of the teams that bidded for you, man? What, what, what was that like, hearing Arsenal coming in for you at, that kind of, at them levels in terms of money as well? It was nice. Like, what's the called? Obviously, supporting them and having them want you at the same time, it's just like, oh, this, this, is, this is amazing. Like, but hmm. the things never worked out, so you just got to move on as quick as possible. But it was just like, oh, yeah, this may happen. And, like, my whole family was like, oh, wow, Arsenal... But yeah, it just didn't work out, man. Mm. So we're talking about your international career now, yeah? You played for England under 21s and then you went on to be represent Ivory Coast where you're originally from. Like, what, what was the reasons and, and, and the process of that happening? Um, it was a thing where, to be honest, it was a thing where obviously I've gone up through the ranks playing for England. Mm. And I feel like I wasn't really given a fair shot with the first team. Mm. Like I went through ages and just not not being picked. And obviously I've I've been I've been um spoken to by like I spoke to Drogba and he's explained to me like what it's felt like to play for Ivy Coast and stuff. And that like it was just like for one Drogba's calling me and it's like he's explaining all these things to me. And I've, when, when they've come to me, I've turned them down the first time because I wanted to play for England at the time. And then after, it was just like, they were still on my case. Like, even though I've turned them down before, mm. like, st still wanting me. And at the same time, on the other hand, with England, no matter my performances, I weren't, I weren't getting picked at the time. Mm. And it was like, the, the, what, like what, am I, what am I working towards? Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it it was a it was a straight decision after like when Ivy Coast came back to me again and I was like yeah hundred percent I'll come and play and I like I'm I'm glad I did it because the support and love that the country has given me since and I've barely even done anything like mm. but just be like when I go back when um our, like the Afcon that that happened recently. Mm. We got the quarterfinals. The love is it was insane. Like we won it or something. So yeah, man, it's just magical. Mm. That, that, that's what I, I've been to Africa a lot in the last couple of years, man. And that's one thing I've noticed is the passion for football and their knowledge and interest in football is like a mad level because it's just crazy out there and in the African continent. It's just nuts. It's mad, man. Like, like when I when I say like. You could you could leave a legacy over there. Like once mm. you're once you're playing for the country, you are a king. Do mm. you know what? I mean? Yeah, Just, yeah. The, the love is unreal, man. Like Drogba has a beer named after him over there. Like, oh. It's mad, man. Wherever you go, like when I've taken trips back, like anyone that sees you is just support and love. So. Mm. It's nice to be involved in that, do you know what I mean? And you get the food as well. The food, don't tell me you don't miss the food. <laughs> yeah, 100%, man. Like, now my, my mum used to cook it constantly. Now she lives in Ivy Coast, is not it? But the food is, what's it called, is unbelievable, man. I miss it most of the time still. Mm. Right, let me just give you a few quick fire questions, yeah, and then we, I'll, I'll let you get on your way, bro, yeah? Okay. Just quick, quickly, what's, what's been the biggest manager rant in your memory so far? Uh, um, 100% Ian Holloway. Yeah? He's the funniest, by the way. He is the <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, some of the stuff he used to say, yeah. Um, basically, the, see the, semi, uh, the semi-finals, um, the playoff semi-finals. So basically, uh, I don't know if you heard, but we went to the changing room and someone had pooed, basically, on the floor. What? Exactly. <laughs> Bro, he was going crazy. He was going crazy. Man, I can't say half of the stuff he said, but he was going crazy because it's like, why we get into our cha why we get into the way changing room and the way changing room smells like, like, it, like someone pooed on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is one way to put you off the floor. Again. Yeah, he was going mad. That is one of the funniest days, man. Right. So yeah. he's one of he's one of your funniest teammates. Yannick Bellassi. He's, a, yeah. he's one of my best friends in football, but he's one of the funniest guys, man. Where did my man get his skills from? Some of the stuff that so, he was dropping. Wow. Yeah. Just, that's just, I don't, I don't even know what to call it. He's 100% a street baller. Like, I don't even know. 
Like so half of the stuff he does, yeah, is unreal. Like the trick that he made up against Tottenham or whatever, it's just like Oh, that was mad. Don't... Yeah, you don't think that's mad. You should see the stuff he tries in training, man. Like it's I see mad. one thing he done, he done it against a girl team. You just trained against a girl team. I see it online. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just yeah. took liberties, man. <laughs> No, yeah, but no. back in the day, watching you and him on either wing must have been a problem for the fullbacks. Yeah, no, it was actually fun playing with Yannick, man. Like, where was that? I, was that? Hey, was that like a little competition between you? Who could like set it alight on a day more? Yeah, yeah, hundred, hundred percent. Like, yeah. if you do something over there, I think okay. If I, when I get the ball, now it's my turn. Do you know what I mean? Every mm. game it was just like. Who can bat it up more? Do you know what I mean? Mm. But we're both trying to get goals, and it's just like you know you need that healthy competition mm. because before I didn't ha I didn't have that on the other side. Do you know what mm. I mean? So having him on the other side is just like who can outdo mm. each other. You know what I mean, but at the same time we're still friends. Do you know what I mean? But mm. on the business, man. Healthy, healthy rivalry. I like that. Yeah. What's your favorite away day stadium? Arsenal. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I love their stadium, man. It's nice. Nice. What's the best shirt you've got from a match and why? Um, I've got Drogba shirt because obviously he's a, yeah, a hero, man. Like, all he's done for the country. So, yeah, getting that from him was nice. Toughest opponent this season? What, just as a defender or just someone? Yeah, you, if you're playing against a fullback, who, who, when you, you see the team sheet, you think, right, I've got to be on it today. Carl Walker's actually rather difficult to get past at times, you know, because obviously he's strong, he's fast. So you have to think of a, think of something else quickly. Do you, when you get a defender like that, are you having a difficult time against you? Yeah? Are you thinking, right, let me go on the other side and find this, see if there's a weak link somewhere else? Or you think, actually, no, I'm going to keep guard against this one until I get past him? It, it varies sometimes. Sometimes I can try that. Or sometimes it's just like, you know what? Today is me versus you, man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to, do you know what I mean? I have to, I have to find a way past you. You know what I mean? Because he hasn't, he's not get, he, he's not, he's not got that option of switching or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I need to find a way. This is my job. I have to get past you. Do you know what I mean? Even if it's telling someone, it's telling one of the, telling one of the midfielders to come over, so we can do a one-two around him or whatever. Do you know? What I, mean? I think that's something that's the, when I watch you now. Yeah, that's something that I think you've added to your game that you didn't have when I when I was with you at 19, 19 years old at Man United. Is that when you was at United and you come, you wanted the ball to feet all the time. You wanted the ball to feet so you could run at the fullback. Whereas if there's a fullback, like say for instance a Carl Walker, who's actually good one v one, or Wan Bissaka or someone like that, there's got to be other ways that you can get random. Like you say, a one two or running inside him without the ball when the right person gets on it. So there, it's good, man. Evolving. Watching other wingers like Raheem, Sane, like uh, Marshall, like they don't need the ball to feet. Mm. As that, that little movement and getting it over the top is so much easier. I'd rather, that, that, it's a nightmare for a defender. Yeah, man. That ball yeah. over the top and you're one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper is so much better than mm. trying, to, trying, trying to do so much tricks than trying to get past someone and then shooting from far. Just that, that, that ball over the top, getting onto it is so much easier, man. Do you do a lot of that? Do you, do you watch a lot of other players and, and, and try and take the best bits out of other players to add to your game? Yeah, I look at I look at Neymar quite a bit. His ability is a joke. He's the same. Like he likes to dribble quite a bit, but even sometimes he'll run in behind. You know what I mean? But just him as an all-round player, mm. he's definitely a benchmark because Neymar on his day, I feel like he's unbeatable. Mm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And he's always looking. He does all them skills. This is what I think is like, um, kind of when you, young players talk about Neymar, they just talk about skill. But what the difference is with someone like him is end product. There's always a, a cross, a pass, a shot. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference, man. Because mm. he's got that. He, you can talk about him doing, doing so much tricks, whatever, whatever. But then once he gets his trick out, he's finishing it. Yeah. Like, he's been. <laughs> that's the difference. Like he can do so much tricks, whatever, whatever. But then he'll he'll put it top corner. Then what can you say after that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. For you, Messi or Ronaldo? I'd say Messi, man. I have this dispute all the time. Why? That's... Tell me why. I want to know why. Okay, the reason why I say Messi is because he is... Okay, I feel like, yeah, I rate Ronaldo massively, yeah, but Ronaldo is the best goal scorer in football. 
And then I feel like, as a footballer, Messi's the best footballer. Do you mm. get it? That's why I feel mm. like, like Ronaldo, you can see that he has worked like a machine to be where he's 35, doing a madness still. It's mad. It's mad. But, like, Messi just has an all-round player. The way, like, when he plays that, like, it's just nice to watch, man. Mm. Like how he, but like he'll have his head down, but see a through ball somehow. Mm. You know. What I'm so yeah, hundred. I feel like for me, Messi. But that's not me taking away all of Ronaldo's hard work because he's an unbelievable player as well. Mm. But yeah, all day for me. Okay, Messi's your guy. My YouTube channel is called Five. So please name your best five players you shared a locker room with in your career. Gigsy. I feel like he's left-footed, but he's not like the usual left-footed player. Like, it's kind of unorthodox, some of the stuff he does. Like, it's... it's <laughs> you know yourself. Like, the way he runs and stuff, it's not like the usual um, Robin. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's, it's a different left-footed. So, mm. yeah, like, it was a, just a joy to watch him train and play and stuff. Robin Van Persie, because of what I told you before, like, unless you see it for yourself, like, his chest, like, the way he chests the ball how technical he is until you see him properly. So, yeah, um, Rooney, because, like, how relentless he is, how hard he works, literally like a pit bull. And then on top of how hard he works, there's that quality of the way he strikes the ball. Mm, clean. And, like, I even got to tell you this. You've seen it for years and years, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, Yannick Blassi, because, what's it called? Um, like, the skills. He's entertained mm. me for years, man. Mm. Like, a good friend of mine, like, the way, like, I've loved playing with him for years. The last person is Glenn Murray. Yeah, that's a big difference from what I've just seen. I've seen bare skill, man, on what you've just given me there. And Glenn yeah. Murray's out-and-out goal scorer. Yeah, yeah, no, because that, that season when we went up, he was a, no, Rio, he was a joke. Is it? Like, it was dumb, the goals he was scoring, man. Like, his, this is, this is where intelligence comes into football. Like, mm weren't the fastest, he weren't the strongest, but he used his head. Like, I remember there's a free kick here from near the halfway line, yeah? And he's set off running five minutes before we even kick the ball, just so he's <laughs> head start on the centre-back. So he's set off running. I remember Mele hit a, like, diagonal ball. It's gone straight into his path, and he's, like, slid and volleyed it into the goal. That's when I was thinking, this guy, it's not, it's not just Different. a game. He thinks about this mad, like, so, yeah, it has to be him, man. He's definitely a guy that I enjoyed playing with as well. I'm disappointed, but there's not one defender in your five. It's a liberty. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, bro. sorry uh, man. No, cool. Well, listen, man. Good luck when it all gets going again. So stay safe. Thank you very much, Rio, man. Same to you and the fam. That's a wrap, guys. Make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for more Lockwoods coming. We've got some great guests coming up. See you soon. Mm -hmm.